8.5 Add and Subtract Rational Expressions. Unlike with multiplication and division, when we add and subtract fractions, we do need to get a common denominator. So when we already have a common denominator, it's nice and easy. A over C plus B over C is just, C is a common denominator, and so we have A plus B on the top. So when we have 12 over 5x minus 2 over 5x, 5x is a common denominator, and then we just do 12 minus 2, which is 10. From there, we want to simplify. We can divide the top by 5, we can divide the bottom by 5, and we get 2 over x as our final answer. In this problem, our common denominator is just 2x plus 5, so we have 3x plus 1, and we can't simplify that any further. When we add and subtract with unlike denominators, we need to get a common denominator as a first step. So our common denominator here is just CD. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is how'd you get from C to CD? You had to multiply the bottom by D. So you have to do the same thing to the top. Multiply the top by D. Plus, how do we get from D to CD? We had to multiply by C. So we do the same thing on the top. Subtraction works exactly the same. CD is our common denominator. How do we get from C to CD? You need to multiply by D, do the same thing to the top, minus B. How'd you get from D to get to CD? Multiply by C, so do it to the top. In this problem, we just want to find the least common multiple of 5x squared minus 45 and 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. Before I do this problem, I just want to talk about what the least common multiple means. The least common multiple is how you usually get your common denominator. So before, when I was looking at CD, the least common multiple between C and D was just CD. The least common multiple between 2 and 8 is just 8. The least common multiple between 4 and 6 would be 12. We can do these things in our head quite easily. But how do we really get the least common multiple? Let's look at the 4 and 6 example. If we broke 4 down with its factor tree, we would get 2 times 2. If we broke 6 down, we get 2 times 3. The least common multiple means that we need all of the factors of each of these numbers, but we don't need to repeat anything. What do I mean? I mean that when we're looking at 4 and 6, for example, I need the 2 from here. I need the 2 from here. Then I go over to my 6. Well, the 2 is already covered. I don't need to repeat it. But the 3, I had not yet had covered. So my least common multiple is 12. You see that? It's not just 4 times 6, which is 24, because I didn't need to repeat the 2. So when I ask you to find the least common multiple in this equation, what you want to do is first factor down each of the parts. So when we have 5x squared minus 45, take out the 5, we get x squared minus 9, factor that down even further, x plus 3, x minus 3. Now look at the 4x squared plus 24x plus 36. Well, the 4 is what we can factor out first. Always do that if you can. And now we can factor that down even further, x and x, 3 and 3 plus and plus. So now let's look at the number part first. Between 5 and 4, there's absolutely nothing in common, so we need a 20. And then we need one of the x plus 3's, and we need an x minus 3. And we look over here. Well, the 4 we covered at the beginning, the x plus 3 is already covered, but a second x plus 3 is not yet covered, so I need to put it in. So this would be my least common multiple. I could write it as 20x plus 3 squared, because I have two of them, x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that is my least common multiple. That's how I would find the common denominator. So now when we're looking at fractions, we do the same type of thing. Well, the 10x squared, there's nothing I can factor out of that. It's just one term. In this, I can factor out a 5x, and I have 
x minus 2. So when I go to get my least common denominator, I look here first. I need the 10x squared from the first term. Now I look at the 5. Well, the 10 already has the 5 covered because 5 times 2 is 10. So I don't worry about that. Then I look at my x. Well, the x squared already has that covered because x squared is just x times x. So I don't need that. But the x minus 2, I don't yet have. So I need to add that in. Now I look at the numerator since I have the common denominator. How do I get from the 10x squared to the 10x squared times x minus 2? Well, I need it to multiply by x minus 2. So I do the same thing on the top plus 2x. Now how did I get from the 5x, x minus 2 to 10x squared, x minus 2? I needed to multiply by 2x. So I do the same thing to the top. Now just simplify it all out. Distribute the 3 plus 4x squared all over 10x squared times x minus 2. And then I'm just going to put in the proper order, 4x squared plus 3x minus 6 over 10x squared times x minus 2. I might want to try and factor the top and see if it can cross out with the x minus 2 in the bottom, but in this case, I can't. So that is my final answer. Let's look here. Let's factor it down. Take out a 3, x minus 5. Here we can factor it into x and x. 5 and 1, we want a minus 4, so minus plus, and that makes a minus 5. We're good to go. Common denominator, look here first. We need a 3. We need an x minus 5. Look over here. The x minus 5 is already covered, but we need an x plus 1. How did I get from this denominator to this one? I needed to multiply by an x plus 1, so let's do it to the top minus, and then we have the 2x plus 2. Note how I put it in parentheses. That's going to be very important because I need to remember to distribute the minus sign to the whole thing. And then I look how I get from this denominator to this one. I needed to multiply by the 3. Now let's just distribute that x out, x squared plus x, and then let's distribute, let's just distribute the minus 3 to all of this, minus 6x minus 6 over 3, x minus 5, x plus 1, we get x squared minus 5x minus 6 over 3, x minus 5, x plus 1, and then let's see if we can factor the top. x and x, 6 and 1, minus and plus, that makes a minus 6, so that works. And look at this. We can actually cross out this x plus 1 with that x plus 1 and simplify it all the way down to x minus 6 over 3 x minus 5. Now, I'm wondering if any of you saw the easier way to do this problem. Let's look at it again. x over 3 x minus 15 minus 2 x plus 2 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. The first step was to factor all this stuff down so we can find the common denominator. But you know how in class I'm always telling you, if you can simplify first, do it? Well, look at the numerator. Well, obviously, you can't simplify down x. But couldn't you simplify down 2x plus 2 to 2? x plus 1, and then look what would have happened. The x plus 1s would have canceled out right from the get-go, making our problem a little bit easier. Now our common denominator is just this 3x minus 5, because when we look over here, the x minus 5 was already covered. So to get from this denominator to this one, we didn't have to touch it. To get from this denominator to this one, we did need to multiply by 3, so we have 2 times 3 is all we have because the x plus 1 is already canceled out, right? We just had minus 2 left on the top, minus 2 left on the top. And that's how we get our x minus 6 over 3, x minus 5. So you'll see that we got the same answer both ways. But please try and be aware of if you can simplify first, do it. It oftentimes makes your problem so much easier. 
Now, here's a bunch of rules that your book gives you for simplifying complex fractions. I'm not even going to read them to you because this is how you do it. Let's just think about it. Try and simplify the top and the bottom of your big fraction. So this is like your big fraction line. This is the top, this is your bottom. Let's try and simplify the top. Well, we can't simplify one any further. But the bottom, let's get a common denominator. That common denominator would be PQ. So now how to get from P to PQ, multiply by Q, one times Q is just Q, plus P. Now our problem becomes one divided by Q plus P over PQ. Don't write this step, I'm just writing it so you can think, keep it, change it, flip it. And so our final answer, PQ over Q plus P. Same thing goes in this problem. Let's look at the numerator, get a common denominator, x times x minus five. We need an x there, so six x plus one, we need an x minus five there. All over, common denominator, oh look, same thing, x times x minus five. Three, to get from x to here, we needed an x minus five, minus two, now let's just simplify the top and the bottom, so we get 6x plus x minus 5 over x times x minus 5 all over 3x minus 15 minus 2x over x times x minus 5. Now combine like terms, 7x minus 5 over x times x minus 5, x minus 15 over x times x minus 5. Keep it. Change it. Flip it. Some of you were probably getting excited a while ago that those were going to cross out, as was I, and we are left with 7x minus 5 over x minus 15 as our final answer. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.